Right, welcome back to the channel. A front and rear dash cam with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for 80 quid. What a bargain. Let's get into this and have a look, shall we? Right, let's unbox it and let's see what we got. So there's the unit there. Quite a hefty size screen on it. And there's our front view camera. And we've got some ports on the side there. Well, I'll go through those in a minute. Right. And then we've got the user manual. Uh, auxiliary cable. The rear rear view camera. And the uh, plug to go into your 12 volt DC socket, which also, I unbag this now and show you, so obviously that goes into your 12 volt uh, auxiliary socket and then it splits into three. So that's a USB-C connection, obviously goes in the back of the unit to power it up. And then you've got your auxiliary, which is what that would plug into. And then go into your auxiliary socket of your car radio. If you don't have an auxiliary socket, it does have an FM transmitter on it to transmit it to an empty FM station if yours doesn't have the aux socket. And there's also a USB there to plug your phone into it. And that's it, it all looks pretty simple. Okay, these are the connections on the back. So, USB-C connection, which, as I showed earlier, goes to this. Uh, you have an AV in, which goes to the rear camera. An SD card slot. There's a, I've just, it doesn't come with an SD card, so you will need to buy that separately. Um, it takes up to 128 gig. Oh, I've just put a 32 in there. And you've got to make sure that it's fast enough to obviously record video. Um, that one there is a GPS antenna in uh, for well, obviously GPS. That hasn't come with this. You can buy it separately. Um, we're not going to need that anyway because of the Apple uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do it through the phone anyway. Okay, so that's the connections on the side there. Let's go and throw them in the car and uh, have a look. Right, I think what I'll do is before I put, fit it into the car, uh, as it's powered by a USB-C, we'll just power it up with a USB-C and uh, we'll go run through some of the features on it. So we'll whack them in there and the unit should, should boot up. There we go. Okay, and as there's an SD card in there, it's already started recording. So on the home screen, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Recorder is your dash cam. So obviously this is the front camera on here. And the rear camera I've got stuffed out of the um, living room window, pointing out the uh, out into the garden there. So that's that. Um, if you want just the front camera, you can double tap on that. If you want just the rear camera, you can double tap on that. And also there's some menus along here. Start and stop recording. Take a screenshot. Lock the screen. If you don't want sound, you can push that one there and it will cut the microphone off. This one here is the same as double tapping to bring you either a dual screen, front or rear, however you want. And that, that one takes you back to home. Mobile internet, pretty self-explanatory. Once your phone is paired to the unit, you can mirror your phone to this and you can watch videos and so on. Screencast is for your Apple CarPlay and um, Android Auto. Music player and clock. Down the bottom here, FM. Now, if your car doesn't have an auxiliary socket for the audio, you can get it to broadcast on a blank FM station. So 
and the, the, the sand will come through your cast area that way if you do have an auxiliary set it to auxiliary and plug the auxiliary into your auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary socket in the car it's all fairly simple i'll demonstrate that when we go out to the car anyway uh, right bluetooth is your your bluetooth settings obviously not not connected yet there's the bluetooth name uh, we'll we'll pair bluetooth and everything in a bit replay so that's to replay the footage that has been recorded brightness brightness and then into the setting menu you've got a load of stuff on here right mobile link depending on what phone you're using whether it's android or apple apple carplay android auto apple airplay or wireless and uh, android wireless mirror obviously use that one if you don't want to mirror your phone screen to this carplay position you can have it full screen on the right of the screen and left of the screen and then the opposite side to where you've got your car player android auto will be your camera i'll show you that in a bit later on resolution 4k down to 720p this is for the front camera now the rear camera is um 1080p constantly but the front camera can be adjusted there we'll leave it on 4k and see what it looks like when we go for a drive um loop recording one minute three minutes or five minutes we'll leave that on one minute g sensor if you have an accident it will lock the footage to stop it being over overwritten and you can set the sensitivity of the g sensor lapse record i'm not totally sure what this is and i've contacted sicane about it about this to hopefully shed some light on what it does i think it's going to be something to do with an overlap from um, one piece of footage to the next to avoid any gaps i think that's what it might be i'm not 100 percent, but i say i've contacted them about it parking time now i contacted ck about this and they said it doesn't record um after the unit's been powered off but i did have this say enter a parking mode and then it wouldn't it, the screen was locked and i couldn't do anything i don't know how it entered a parking mode but it did and I can't get it to do it again. But you can select how long you want it to record, I guess, on here. Car OSD. Put your registration number in there. And then your registration number will be um, imprinted on the, the footage when it's recorded. Screensaver. Here's a screensaver, obviously. Setting guideline. When you've got your rear camera plugged in, you can adjust your guidelines for a uh, parking camera uh, back camera mirror and back camera flip is quite a handy thing if you can only mount the camera upside down you can flip the image to suit language is language obviously change the language in there time setting is obviously pretty self-explanatory date format however you have your date um, wi-fi on and off the wi-fi info and format the sd card and that's pretty much it let's um pair bluetooth and wi-fi and uh let's get the uh the android auto working on it okay let's get the uh the android auto working so you need to pair this device to um to wi-fi and bluetooth so settings uh connections uh wi-fi wait for it to find it uh, it is that one there and the passcode is one two three four five six seven eight now because this unit itself doesn't have an internet connection it will come up with a warning to say that it doesn't have an internet connection there we go just press always connect right go back and bluetooth wait for it to find it There it is there. Yeah, pair. Right, then it should. Should have Android also come up. There we go. And there is Android Auto. So music coming through the screen. I'll turn that off because I don't want a copyright strike. 
Um, you got your maps in the middle, your, your camera on the left, or the right, depending on how you set it in that menu I showed you earlier on. If you double tap this, you can show just the rear camera or just the front camera. It can't do both when you've got the CarPlay or um, Android Auto on the same screen. And also you've got your, your phone settings in there, how you want your CarPlay displayed and stuff and what you want on there. Uh, your Android, uh, Samsung Music and Maps. Right, even though it's only showing one camera on this, it still records from both. So, no matter which one you select, it's still going to record from both. Now, you can have this, and it's a 10.2-inch display, so it's a fairly, fairly large display. You can have it, so it's just a big navigation. So, if we come out of here and um, go to home, where I showed you earlier on, where you want your car play position, up here, Go full screen, confirm the unit's going to restart. So what we'll do when it restarts, we'll see how long it takes to boot up and then reconnect to the phone. <coughs> and then we can have a full screen navigation and all, and all the while it's doing this, your dash cam is still going to be recording. So you can just use it as a big navigation screen. There we go. Started recording again now. There we go. Should connect any minute. And there we go. Now, if I double click the map, Oh no, sorry, swipe all this off. How can I do it before? You just press maps on there, I think it is. There we go. We've now got a full screen map with your music at the bottom. And that makes a really nice satellite navigation with a big old screen like that, which is pretty cool. Right, just to add, Sikane have got, got back to me about this lapse recording parking time, right? Now... When I connect this to this USB cable in the house, just connected into a USB adapter to power a thing up, these two are on the menu screen. When I plug this unit into the car, these two are not on the menu screen. And the reason is, you need an extra lead to connect it to a permanent 12 volt supply. So, lapse record, when you're in parking mode, you turn the car off, the extra power feed takes over. You can record five, one, two or five frames per second in when the car is parked. And the parking time, you can have it to record for one hour, two hour, five hours or ten hours or never. Um, so that's what that's all about. So yeah, with the extra lead, they call it a buck connector, I think it is. But basically it just connects it to a permanent supply. And... Um, when you switch the car off, the unit will go into parking mode and will record while parking, but it'll only do it in either one, two or five frames per second, obviously to save space on your on your SD card. So that's what that's all about. Okay, so this is the rear camera. And it does have this red wire, which you connect to your reverse lights. Um, fairly simple to do I can I can show that in another video but it is pretty simple to do and then when you select reverse the unit will default to a reverse camera you'll have the guidelines on the screen like I showed you in the menu and you can use the uh, rear camera as a parking camera so I fitted the reverse camera up in there just for now the wire is just tucked up gone into the boot and just thrown through the car I'll route it properly later just for testing purposes we'll leave it like that well, this is just great. I want to record some footage and uh, yeah, it started pouring with rain. Ah, oh, fantastic. Right, anyway, let's, um, let's get this thing hooked up. Okay, so our 12 volt thing goes into 
our 12 volt auxiliary socket there is a way of hardwiring these and i have showed it in a previous video i'll leave a link up there to that one to see how you can hardwire these without cutting the plug off you don't want to cut the plug off because if you look on here it's 12 to 24 volts in but it's five volts out so you can't cut the plug off but there is a way of doing it where you you can still use your accessory socket but this is hidden on the dash so link up there check it out so that goes in there okay and the other end goes into our usb c connection in there right let's just stick that there a minute um right the rear camera connection Obviously this, you've seen where I've put the rear camera. I haven't connected it up as a reverse camera. Um, I've just poked it in the bumper for now and chucked the wire through the boot. So that into there. Right, let's just chuck that up there for a minute. Right, and next is our auxiliary. Now, if your car doesn't have an auxiliary, you can use the FM transmitter, but mine does have an auxiliary, so the auxiliary plugs into there, and then the other end of the auxiliary goes into there, like so. And that's it, we're ready to go. Now, this does have, it doesn't have a suction cup, but it's got this uh, 3M tape on the bottom. Uh, this stuff really, really does stick. So it's kind of a semi-permanent installation. Uh, you can get these off, but once they're stuck, they're really stuck. But you've got to make sure your dash is totally clean and choose your location wisely. So for now, all I'm going to do, this is broken anyway. The lid is broken. So I'm just going to ram that in there. And hopefully that will just sit there. Like that. Right, let's uh, start the car up. Right, the first thing we want to do is change the setting into, so it comes out of the car stereo. So we go to FM and we choose AUX and as my radio is on AUX and it's plugged into there we should, fingers crossed, have sound coming through the AUX of the, uh, of the radio. So going to here, it should connect to the Apple CarPlay, there we go. So have some Samsung music. There we go, and he's coming through the car stereo now. Right, don't want to play that too long or I'm going to get me a copyright strike. Right, before I go up the road, I just want to demonstrate the FM transmitter. So, we set that to 87.5, put that on FM. Uh, tune the radio. Uh, and get down to 87.5 there right come back up here the aux now is unplugged look so get back on here go into there there you go and now it's being broadcast through the uh through the radio Okay, looking at the front camera, the image quality looks really, really good. Uh, but the, the test will be if I can pause this with a car coming in the other direction and see if we can catch the number plate on the car coming in the opposite direction. Now, a lot of dash cameras, you can't do that. It would just be a blur. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, so the image is not crystal clear, but you can definitely make out a registration, and that's pretty impressive considering the speed of the two cars are moving. 
it probably doesn't help the fact that the uh, dash cam is not fixed to the dashboard properly so it's bouncing around a little bit if it was probably stuck on there then the footage probably would be a lot better okay moving on to the rear camera the image quality is a bit more pixelated than it is on the front camera but we'll have a go and see if we can zoom in on a registration or a road sign or something and see if we can read it Well, the answer to that is, well, no, you can't really read it. It's, um, although it's probably better than most dash cams, you definitely couldn't read that. So there we have it. The Chicane front and rear dash cam with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in a really sleek looking 10.2 inch display. What a great bit of kit. It gets a thumbs up from me. I'm really impressed with it. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can get one of these. Plus, have a browse on their website. They do lots of car audio, um, in-car entertainment stuff. Well worth a look. Go check them out. I'm really impressed with this. Awesome stuff. Right. Until next time, look after yourselves. I'll see you again.